Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another Thursday live stream. We got a few things to get into today, and we will get to them. Were any of you surprised by the initial results from the first video of the tournament? <laughs> I was a little bit. Tomorrow will be even more surprising with a, a, a slight twist that is not clickbait at all because I'm not going to label it in the title, but I'm saying it today. I was very surprised and I came to a decision I was not expecting to make, but I have decided to do something, uh, sell something based on this little test that I started out as a fun, something different for YouTube. And it ended up being a little bit more than that. So if nothing else, this was well worth it. And that video will be up tomorrow. Uh, let me see how you're doing. Wasn't expecting audio. Yeah, it happens. I made sure everything was plugged in today. It's It's been nice having uh, the eight extra preamps uh, from the ADAT interface. So I don't have to worry about things being plugged in or not plugged in. I just have 10 inputs at all times, and they're all pretty much uh, staying exactly where they need to sit. So everything has its own little home and its own little piece of tape on top of it, letting me know which input is which input. Because if you ever worked in a studio, you know that's, uh, it's pretty common practice, and it makes things a little bit easier because we can be forgetful at times. <laughs> a wet and cold in the North UK. Is it ever not wet and cold and cloudy? I hear that's all the UK is. <laughs> Dolphin. Hello, Greg, Paul, and Deb. <laughs> I just laugh when I think of the, the UK because it's just so stereotyped on uh, to me as far as the weather goes. A every time I see videos from it, it, it's just overcast. It looks like it's shot cinematically. It's just it, it looks like a wild place. But I can see why so much great music has come out of the UK. That's for sure. Similar to um, perhaps the Pacific Northwest in the '90s. Not now. Now I, it's a very different place. But all those grunge bands and stuff like that makes sense when you consider the weather, the weather rather, and all that fun stuff. But I wanted to ask you guys. Because I, I feel like every, everything is just crazy as far as people giving their predictions or, or stating facts about the, um, the guitar market. And it's kind of, I don't know, there, there, there's some obvious things that if you, if you just pay attention to, to going outside and go do your own grocery shopping and pay for your own insurance premiums and homeowners insurance and all that stuff. Like you're going to notice these things um, as far as prices of going crazy. But then when it comes to guitar stuff, other things that I've been telling you guys since the beginning of this YouTube channel, that has nothing to do with the gear apocalypse, whatever garbage clickbait that is. Um, I don't buy mass produced guitars if ever. If ever, I'm fortunate that I'm I'm able to now work with some companies in order to get some stuff in return for my work, but especially guitars, I I, I try to stay the hell away from mass-produced guitars new and used for the most part because when times do get tougher and all the expenses I just mentioned go up, obviously. You're competing with a million people that have the same product as you. So the only way you're going to get a sale, you guessed it. You're going to have to lower your price. But there are other aspects of it. Like there was a video that blew up. I'm sure some of you have seen um, some guitar shop guy in the United States um, saying how he can't offer anybody anything on trade and how everybody's delusional and all of this. Well, he did make some good points, but I'm going to give you some really solid advice that again, I've given for a very long time on this channel. Uh, don't ever trade your gear into a shop. Don't ever have a gear. Don't ever, if you have to get rid of a guitar, don't, don't do consignment unless, unless you have an extremely valuable vintage guitar. In that case, I can understand working with a place like Carter's vintage music. To, to have them sell it or elderly because with, with the vintage stuff, that's of that high of, of dollar certain clientele, they'll, they'll spend the money 
much easier buying it from a place like that that's going to do all the authentication processes necessary as well as have the credibility to do so versus random Joe Schmo on the internet despite you even promoting or posting, providing all of the same exact information, pictures, um, dates on the pots, dates on the necks. It doesn't matter. Sometimes that really will be the difference in the sale for everything else. If, unless you're selling a vintage instrument, do not be an idiot. Do not bring it into these shops because they're just going to sell it for like, and that's the other thing you have to realize. Everybody has their own motivations. Like that guy's shop motivation when he tells you at the end of the video, it's time for you to take a haircut. Yeah, it's time for you to take a haircut too, bud. Like, what, what, what are you doing here? And I'm not trying to pick on a mom and pop shop, but that's the reality of it. Like, you have to practice what you preach. If you're, if you're going to tell everybody that your gear is worth nothing, well, you better price your gear worth nothing. And I checked their store. That's not the case. So between that and then all of the... The, 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 the doctors of economics on the internet. I think it's a good thing to step back from it all and maybe reevaluate all of this in the sense that musical instruments were not meant to be this, not for the majority of players. And I feel like that's what it's become. We got really used to getting new things all the time if you wanted to get out of a cheap guitar, you'd be fine because you just basically sell it for what it's worth and then you'd be able to get the new cheap guitar. Or you could sell one decent guitar for like a thousand or two thousand dollars and buy like several cheap guitars. But then at the end of the day, when you get to a situation like what we're just talking about in the current times we live in, those cheap guitars are worth nothing. And that's just how it is because there's a billion of them. And thus, we are at the problem of things. Maybe just narrowing down is the best thing to do. And certainly, this is counterproductive to me again. Uh, not buying new, especially guitars. Amps, I understand a lot more, and I'm much more hesitant to buy a used amp unless it's a vintage amp. Uh, I'd rather buy a new one just for the warranty. With a guitar, I don't care about a warranty, and you shouldn't either. It doesn't make a difference. So that's just some food for thought on my little opening SNL monologue without any jokes in it. Let me catch up on some comments. Uh, have you seen the Game of Thrones, The Wall? That's where I live. Oh, God. No, nah, I don't want to live there. God bless you, though. <laughs> it's nine degrees in Wales, and the sun is out. It's nine degrees Celsius, though. So it's a little bit warmer than nine degrees here. Nine degrees here would be brutal, brutal. Uh, 36 in Michigan. I like how we're all doing a, a weather report. Uh, you saw that video. Yeah, it was it was an interesting, interesting video. But again, you, everybody has their own motivations. And it doesn't matter if it's that shop owner or it's a YouTuber or whatever. Like anybody who's publicly putting something out there, like there's a reason for it. Whether it's nefarious or not, it, that's going to vary. But there's a reason for it. So just, just just keep that in mind, and especially when money and business and trying to convince people of things with their money and what their stuff is worth. Uh, that's some uh, that's some ice I, I wouldn't want to skate on, and I try not to skate on. Elderly is a great store. I a hundred percent agree with you. They're good. They do things right. They might not give you the most, um, but they're really. Really good to work with. I can say that much. Uh, you should catch the video. It sounds fun. Which video? I would like to see a few videos. Um, you got your Dave Grohl. Looks and sounds great. Worth the money. But uh, Sinichi is in another league with its specs. Yeah, I I said that earlier in uh, when we were first talking about these. I, I still think the Shinichi 355 is a much better guitar than the Dave Grohl. You're paying for the name Dave Grohl attached to it. Uh, the Shinichi is much better equipped than the Dave Grohl guitar. And costs less. And they both can be had new. So I'm not even saying, oh, look, buy the old one that was made in the Tirada factory in the late 80s. No, you could buy these ones that are made now. They're fine enough. They're good. I'm happy it's worked out for you. 
Most stores pay you 60% of what they say they could sell it for. They offer 80 on most consignments. I'm greedy. I want 100%. I agree with you. It's why I do things the way I do them. I would rather sit on something for longer because I don't really care. I don't care. Works out for me anyways. So long as you're in a position where you don't need the money to continue to have, you know, the roof over your head, wait it out. Unless you're in the situation that I talked about earlier where, say, you have an American professional, two Stratocaster, uh, good luck with that. Because not much is going to change. There's only going to be more people listing the same exact guitar that you already have listed. So the only way to win is to price yourself as the cheapest option. Nobody wants to do that. It is what it is. Market designation. Yep. The Dave Grohl is great. Neck too massive for you. Really? Too massive for you? I didn't see that coming. Hi, Stan. From Serbia. That's awesome. Uh, Telecaster rules. You installed a five-way switch into mine. It works like a charm. New guitar altogether. Happy. What'd you do? Um, do you have two pickups or three? Because if you have Nashville, it's very easy, which is three pickups. If you have two pickups, you could do a lot of fun stuff with that. You could have a series switch, parallel switch, and then uh, your normal traditional three-way selections. That's pretty cool, though. And I'll get to my Telecaster woes. It's, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. But it was another thing that really hit me when I was filming uh, that tournament video the first time I played the Telecaster and you got to remember I'm playing all the guitars back to back this was all filmed within like a three day span so playing the Telecaster and then playing some of the other guitars the problem with the JV is not the JV itself it's just the fact that there there are two or three frets on that guitar where there might as well be no frets on it they're just it needs a refret that badly so I love Telecasters they're my favorite guitars uh, ever so having not having one that's like properly in in full on functioning condition, playability wise, is rough right now. So I'm I'm jonesing for for a, a telly at some point. But things happen. Things may have already happened. Who knows? <laughs> you just got back from some cowboy guitar. <laughs> You're playing cowboy chords. Uh, playing up at the mountains. How did the guitar bracket work out? Uh, the first half of the round of 16 was done last week. The second half of the round of 16 is tomorrow's video. Next week will be the semifinals and the finals all in the same video. So we have two, two installments still left in it. But as I said, I'm very happy I did it. This started off as a fun wanting to do something different on YouTube outside of the norm. And it ended up being self-serving in many ways. So I'm happy about it. I'm happy. Point nine two at the first. It's not all about the depth. It's about the shape. That's why the R9 is so misunderstood. I feel the Gibson R9 because on paper, the, 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 the next specs can look huge on those. But it doesn't feel huge in your hands. It feels just right in your hands because of the shape of the neck itself. Whereas the Gibson ES-335 that has similar uh, neck depth at the 1st and the 12th fret, it feels way bigger because the rounded C is just a totally different thing. Two pickups. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's really cool. That's really cool. I love the out of phase stuff. It almost gets you into Mustang territory. The only thing that's stopping you from getting into Mustang territory is the scale length and the bridge. It's going to contribute a little bit. Uh, it's bigger than the Gibson or Epi, and most of those are fat 50s next. That's cool, though, man. I have a Maybach Kellyman T54 if you're interested. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I already solved the problem. Speaking of Johnson. <laughs> Any word on that there, Harley Benton Firebird? I haven't heard anything from Harley Benton. And all I was told was, this was in last year, in 2023, is that Q1 of this year is going to be a whole bunch of new stuff. 
And we're in March. We're at the end of Q1. Today, they released some sort of acoustic electric looking instrument. I saw that. But I haven't heard anything about um, new electric guitar models being released. And I haven't gotten any emails. And even if I... Well, I'd give you more hints. Even if I if I had been talking to him about it. But I really haven't been talking to him about it. So, we'll see. The, the, the Dave Grohl 335 wouldn't work for you. You like the 42mm nuts in a normal C. Short fingers, smaller hands. The neck really matters. Probably more than you guys. Uh, I really like the... Um, I like when the the nut width is even smaller than that, depending on the guitar. I like the Jaguars with the, like, if you don't know about old Fenders, like ones from the 60s, there were numbers and then there were letters on the, the actual stub of the neck, the base of the neck. So the most common one would be B, which was standard. A necks were more narrow. And if you ever want to, Again, Carter's Vintage Guitars is a good place just for for research. A lot of those are extremely expensive guitars. Uh, but you'll see like some Jaguars. I've seen nut widths of below 40 millimeters on some of those A-neck guitars. Same thing for Mustangs. So like a 39 millimeter nut, it feels like 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 nothing at the first fret as far as the, the, the width of the neck goes. But it's a really different experience and it makes you play differently. The Jaguar I have now, the Sonic Blue Traditional 60s, I believe that is a 40 millimeter nut. And I, I do play that guitar very differently. It is a joy to play that instrument. And that's one of the big reasons why, is the nut width. It's all little things. And these are things that I never put two and two together on, things I never really paid attention to spec wise because I didn't care. All I cared about was the finish and the weight. <laughs> And whether or not I was going to have to install all new electronics and pickups because I was never a big fan of the mini Alpha Pots or um, some of the ceramic pickups that used to come in older Japanese guitars. But a lot of that has been updated. Now you're getting CTS, Switchcraft, and at least Alnico or in some cases American spec pickups in a lot of those new Japanese instruments. And that's always a big plus in my book. Uh I'm here to speak of those sick new Firebirds. Extra late, but the red one got your eye. I like them. I just think the prices are nuts. Look, I'll t I I'll tell you guys what I told Ian, who's not here today. Uh, when those were first teased months and months ago, I told him if they priced the Pelham Blue one right, I, I was hoping under a thousand dollars and the reason i was hoping under a thousand dollars is because they had firebirds and they still do that are 650 new i was gonna get one of those and try it out but when i saw the price i was just like you're good nuts i'm not spending that on a on a chinese made epiphone i'm sorry i can't do it this, that's too much money but they look great you like the b-necks on old fenders bases i like 38 Ooh, that's really narrow on a base I had a 40.5 millimeter on an old Fender guitar and it was good. I really, yeah, I, it's all going to vary. It's all going to vary. But the more you know and the more you're aware of those changes, you might find something that's really comfortable to you that works out well. You know what? I don't take this off. I got the mic like hovering right here. You can't see it, but I know it's picking that up pretty strong. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. So you guys, you guys really do like those. Okay, cool. Now, uh, the amp, the amp situation. I didn't, <laughs> I haven't been able to film much. And I'm real, I'm really happy that I filmed those videos that I told you I filmed last week because my kid is off from school. Right now, she's being very good. She's just designed another universe of characters that she's drawing uh, mangas for and she does actually draw them going in the right direction which is a plus but as a whole here I have had no time to do anything I've just been playing with her and trying to make sure she's had a good break and I've wanted to film a lot and I still have the tube in the same spot that I had it last week for the the, the gremlin to see if I can give it a little bit more headroom for the, the humbuckers but I actually 
you, you'll see in the, in the, in the coming days. Hopefully, she goes back to school on Tuesday. She has Monday off, extended weekend. On Tuesday, I got I got a lot to film. I'm gonna try and film like four things, just like I did the other day, and one of them will be a test with the new tube and the Tone King amp, and the other will be a new amp. I'm going to let you ponder what it could possibly be. But hopefully, this will be something that will allow me to clear off everything. Not sure about the Gremlin, but as far as the Vox and the Freedman, the Freedman's already for sale. The Guard is not for sale. I love that. It's such a cool little novelty amp, and it's built well. But yeah, get, get, down, to, get down to just the one main amp and just be done with it. So... You'll have to see what that is. So we'll have that, and then we'll have the Gremlin being compared with this amp. So a bunch of stuff with amps and a bunch of stuff with, with mics and miking up amplifiers in the near future because that's that's a lot of fun to me, and it lets me kill multiple birds with multiple stones, and that's one thing I've been very bad at with YouTube. Um, I need to get better at, so I'm going to start doing it, is making the most out of my time when I do have time to film if I'm going to film a comparison anyways between, say, an amp, two, two amplifiers, right? Why not then, in the same comparison, I have two mics set up on the cabinet. And then I can compare the two mics in isolation for a whole separate thing. Because it makes a big difference. And then when I'm done with what I need to film for the actual demo, the mics are already there. I swap out one mic for another mic or I move one off axis or slightly away from the speaker. We can talk about how big of a difference all that makes and just, just try out recording stuff and then see how it actually translates into Pro Tools with the other instruments because that's, that's the end goal here is to have things sit with other instruments. doesn't matter how good your guitar sounds uh, in isolation. Unless you're strictly just playing at home by yourself, in which case, yeah, you want your guitar to sound as good as possible. Uh, the demo shop, the, the demo shop has ten double neck SGs on sale right now for fifty two hundred bucks each. Uh, I would, I would, I, I wouldn't pay two hundred for a any SG. Uh, <laughs> I did see they had a pink three thirty nine though. I think they want four grand for it at their mod shop in their mod collection. It was it was brutal because it, it doesn't have the the matching pink finish on the neck. I hate I hate when Gibson do that. Let me see if I can bring that up to you guys and let me know if if, if you if you like this. Gibson.com. Yes, I'm in America. I promise. Um. Uh, what are we not here? Okay, I think I've lost it. All right, we're just going to Google Gibson Mob Shop. Just so, Mob Shop. Mod Collection. And then I'll blow it up this guy. And then we will all look together. Because there are actually a few that were really sweet. All right, Window Capture. But it, it drives me nuts when they do this. The only other thing I, I dislike more is when they... There we go. Cool. All right, should be good. The only thing I dislike more are stingers. Where is it? Yeah, look at this. Okay, so this thing, that is, oh, it's it's only thirty two hundred bucks, only thirty two hundred bucks. But I actually like it. Until I saw that, I hate that. Finish the freaking neck in the same color as the guitar. Why would you leave that? It makes it look so cheap. It makes it look so cheap. I'm not. I'm not a fan of that. But I thought the pink was pretty outlandish and over the top. There was another one I really liked. That's this is still for sale. Oh my god, it's on. It's even more. It's twenty four. Twenty four seventy nine. You know I like. I love the color blue. So I saw that and I was just like, oh yeah. Now the question of the day is, does that have the unfit? Well, okay. This one doesn't bother me as much because the whole back of the guitar is unfinished, is natural. But when just the neck, ugh, no thank you. But I, I still, I still love what they're doing, man. I really do. I think they're, they're, they're killing it. 
They're killing it. But that's pretty much it. Yeah, and I did see Gibson were having some some sales. Um, reverber. Let's see here. Oh, you can see what I was looking at there. I saw that for sale, and I was just like, I was like, that's a cool guitar. I remember when they couldn't give these things away for 400 bucks. Give this guy a free plug, Luke's Guitar Shop, in Bellingham. Like Jude. Jude Bellingham. Three bolt micro tilt made in Japan. Really, really cool instrument. But I don't need it. Anyway. Um, yeah, I still have that on my watch list. One day. One day I'll get one of those. Although I, 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 didn't, I don't love how that's kind of off-colored there on the finish. He's going to have a hard time moving that. This is what I wanted to look at. I have the Gibson collection on my feed. I thought I saw an R9 for under four grand. Now, did it sell? It did. It did sell. But this one, this is this is my guitar. That's a Dirty Lemon for for forty four seventy nine from Gibson. That's a good deal, man. For that kind, that kind of instrument. Eight point six five pounds, just over eight and a half. That's really. It's pretty light, almost 0.9 and almost 0.1, but again, it doesn't feel that big in your hands. It just doesn't. I thought that was cool. And just in general, is there anything else that's popped up that's interesting? Doesn't look like anything too crazy. I hate how when I, I have JV in my um my search terms and all I get, I get these JV modifieds. God bless them, but that that's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Um, I think that was pretty much it. The rest is just Franklin Guitar Works, who I, who I, lo I love that shop. Um, ooh, that one's even cheaper. Forty-two thirty-nine. That was a little bit more of a flamey top. And 9.1 pounds. Let's just go to Gibson in general. What a 64 reissue for 38? Oh yeah, they're they're trying to move stuff, boys. They are trying to move stuff, ladies and gentlemen. They're not messing around. Look at that, an SG for 1439. You take the one and the four away, I think it's a great steal. Um 335s for two grand. Jesus. RO for 41. Man, great value, dude. Great value. 339 for two grand flat. I'll tell you something. You might not love the 339. Okay? But just think about this for a second. Okay, well, these are our imperfections. Let me go back here. This is how ridiculous this is. So you have this minor little cosmetic finish on one of the F holes, and then a slight little issue near part of the binding towards the body of the instrument, the body end of the instrument. All right, that's $2,000. That's a made in America guitar with all quality, man. Or you could buy an Epiphone for like the same price. Not an Epiphone 339, granted, but still like, it's just, it, it's, it's stupid. Like all this is stupid. It's just dumb. I, I don't get it. Oh, Ian would like that. 61 SG. I know he's a big fan of those. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. Yeah, and a Les Paul Studio is a grand. I, I'll stop. I'll stop. Let me read some comments. See what you guys think about those Gibsons. Uh, you can't play small necks anymore. Arthritis and carpal tunnel. Less time on fat necks. I found my thing is as I've gotten older, I agree with a lot of you guys. I prefer a little bit of a bigger neck in general. Doesn't always need to be a huge neck, but the shape of it means a lot. Like the pattern thin on a Paul Reed Smith neck, I can't, I can't play that. I hate that. I that, that is out of all the modern guitar neck carves, that's my least favorite out of all the brands. I, I hate that neck. I hate 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 that neck. 
because it physically hurts my hand. It physically hurts my wrist to play that neck. It just does not jive with it. However, that being said, like the oval C's from Fender, where the actual depth, again, is going back to what we talked about earlier today. The depth isn't that too far off measurement-wise. No pain whatsoever. Like both the JVs, uh, the Strat and the Tele, neither of them have particularly big necks on them, but the shapes are so comfortable that I, I don't mind that they're not bigger bigger necks. Whereas, And the Gibson's got a little bit of a bigger neck. Uh, the Jaguars got a little bit of a bigger neck. The Corey Wong has a pretty slim neck, but it's a D shape, so it doesn't feel as slim either. Yeah. The, sh- the, the, the shape means more to me than the actual thickness. That's kind of what I'm coming to terms with. But I hated big neck guitars when I was younger. I hated them. As I get older, I have an appreciation, so I get it. That is a good deal on the 59. I agree. Yeah, and everything's on sale. Wish I had even Gibson sale money. Who would be getting something for sure? Well, it's only going to be getting better to buy as things collapse more. <laughs> so long as you have the expendable income to do so. Uh, looks like I'm going shopping. No, I did my shopping. I did my shopping already. And that will be here tomorrow. Amplifier. Oh, something else that came. I'm really stoked about it. I got the right pick guard for the super thin line deluxe Telecaster. So the gold pick guard is going to go on it. But we're waiting to do that because I got a set of Lollertrons that I'm going to install with it with an Emerson wiring harness. Because Lawler wouldn't make me a harness. It's like, wah. Like, can't you guys just put one together real quick? They're like, no, we only make it for standard Telecaster. And I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> so I got an Emerson wiring harness for that one that I've had for a while at this point. Uh, so that should be fun. We'll get to hear the Lollertrons. And the gold pick guard will finally be installed on the super thin line Tele. I love, I love that guitar. I can't wait to hear what it sounds like with a quality set of pickups in it because I don't think those Fidelitrons are particularly great. However, the guitar plays so well and it's so comfortable that I tolerate them Tolerate them for now. But being able to have that gold pick guard is a, is a big plus. And I already test fitted it. It actually fits. So shout outs to, you know what? I'm going to shout them out. Let me, let me make sure I can get the brand. Okay. The people who made this, Chandler. And they even wrote my name on the back. Made just for me. This is a perfect fit. Do not buy from Capital Music Gear. They suck. And if they send you the wrong one, then you're screwed. Too bad for you. That sucks. You're just out 60 bucks. Um, wah. But that was a $60 lesson. I've had more expensive lessons in my life, but... I still wasn't happy about that whole situation. I don't recommend buying a pick guard through them. If you're going to buy a WD pick guard, uh, don't buy it through Capital Music. Buy it from WD directly on their website. And then you can just go straight to the horse's mouth instead of to the middleman. That's how I would do it. But if you don't want to deal with any of that, you just want it done right the first time. Chandler pick guards. I'm really good at sales. Uh, new USA guitars are getting quite pricey. Oh, I'll show you one that made me cackle. Cackle at the new price. After I catch up with some comments. This sale is killing me. Got to pay for repairs on my truck that's in the shop at the moment, and I got to pay for tomorrow. Yeah, it's time and sucks, man. My neighbors are selling a car, and the price is so good on it that I'm like, but he, he's only going to take cash, which is fine. I'd rather have it that way. But I'm like, I need to move some stuff like now. And I got to move in a few months. Ooh, tough one, tough one, tough one. And it's always right after you make one decision or you have one bill that has to get paid. Something like that happens. Just like this Gibson sale. sale. Pattern thin is the worst. I agree. It sucks. Um, thin necks give me cramps. 
again, I think it really has to do with the, the shoulder on the neck itself. You're a bit delayed yesterday in preparation for today's open mic. We tried miking a katana with a dynamic and condenser one on um, each speaker, and the condenser made the sound massive. Yeah, you're picking up a lot more of the high end. And if you're, you, depending on how far away you place the condenser off of the cone, the only thing you'll have to consider are phase issues. But with that, assuming you get that right, and if you have a front of house guy doing it and you're not just rigging it up and hoping and praying, uh, you can do a lot with the positioning of the mic. Like, you, you compensate for phase. If you have the mic a little bit further off, it'll add a little bit of airiness and sparkle to it. You have it right on there. Yeah, you're just getting a totally different flavor because the EQ is going to be a little bit naturally different uh, based on the, the, the condenser and... Um, the it's just the dynamic the cardioid style uh like a 57 or a e609 is I'm, I'm guessing what you guys are using for the for the dynamic mic and then a condenser i don't know what you're using but i i find that condensers i like them a lot on small amps combined with a dynamic like like a 1 by 12 i think is really cool uh on 212s I love the Sennheiser 421 with a 57, but the King is a Royer, oh, uh, R121. Those things are just there to die for. Your 2008 Fender Mustang 65 is starting to hurt your hand in your late 30s. Yeah, those, those are thin necks. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It sucks. But remember... You got, especially as you get older, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm not just a crazy person. I stretch the hell out of my hands before I play. And then after I've warmed up, I stretch them again. And then when I'm E24, the pattern freaking thin neck out with me um, to play a gig. And I played the first set on the 339. And I, I, I tried during uh, just the in between sets, but right before we are going to start the second set, I, I picked up the PRS and I was just, just strumming on it to make sure it was in tune. And I, I'll i never forget the, the pain that I had in my hand. And I noticed it earlier in the day, but I was just like, oh, it's a one-time thing. As soon as I picked up that PRS, I, I just felt it. And I was just like, that, nope, I'll play the Gibson for the rest of the night and that PRS will be sold. And it was listed the next day and I think it's sold within two or three days. It's a beautiful guitar, um, but... So the point being, when you have a problem like that, like you have to address it. In that case, it was to sell that guitar, not buy another one like it, um, with that thin of a neck on it. And also, I learned from Corey Wong to just really, really take stretching seriously. It sounds lame. When you're a guitar player, the last thing you want to think about is making sure you're all stretched and playing because it's like, dude, you're playing guitar. Are you serious? Yeah. I am. <laughs> I don't want to be 60 years old and, and, and really struggling to play for longer than an hour without pain. So if I have to do this, if it adds 10 minutes to every session, I'll sign up for it. All right. I'm, I know I'm way behind. You bought the JHS Overdrive preamp on the fire sale they had the other day. Thing is freaking rad. DOD clone. I didn't even see that. That's pretty cool. You're looking around and you still have room on the card. Oh, God, you're 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 just an addict. We all are. <laughs> I hope you like that JHS pedal, though. I, di I didn't know they, were, they released it. I can't keep up with pedals. Pedals are even worse than guitars um, in the sense that every day there's a new pedal. And I'll tell you, the machine, the machine sucks. Like, I opened Instagram this week. I don't know if you guys did, too. I'm, obviously, I'm a huge fan of the Benson preamp. I've never worked with Benson. But I follow Benson, and then there's a few other places I follow in shops. My entire freaking Instagram feed was all about their new preamp pedal. I couldn't get away from the thing. And it was all posted at the same time. And just, I don't like that. I don't like when advertising is just like, so in your face. It's a lot. And I like that company, and I know that's the way forward. I know that's what's successful for a lot of these brands. But for me, it's like, I'd rather not do that. Anyway, probably better to warm up than stretch. Oh, I do I, I, I do both. 
<laughs> I stretch, then I warm up, then I stretch, then I play, then I cool down with the stretch. I told you, three parts to it. I'm not screwing around. I'm going to be playing guitar till the day I die. At least if I can control it. Assuming that I continue to have both of my um, hands. Uh, you're thinking of thinning, uh, thinning your herd. Let go of either the hand-wired Vox AC-15 or the Princeton Reverb with the Jensen thought. I do have thoughts. But the real question is, which one do you like the sound of better and which one do you play more? Leave me alone, spam phone call. Because if you... If you like the Vox better, stay with the Vox. That This is a decision that you're just going to have to sit with your guitars and you're just going to have to come to it. They're very different. Me personally, if it was between a new Fender Princeton 65 reissue and the Vox, it's going to sound crazy to you. I'd keep the Vox. Vox is better built. Vox will last longer. Vox is easier to maintain. Awesome. Your board has doubled in the past year. It was pretty big to begin with. Well, I've been pretty good about staying away from the uh, the 40 pedal board. 40 pedal pedal board rigs. It's tempting. It's tempting. But I don't know. Maybe I'll start maybe I'll start doing that. I'll start trying to work with some pedal companies. Be a lot easier of a thing to do. Uh, you sold your tube amps because the modern software devices are becoming very good. Why do you still play amps instead of plugins? As a YouTuber, the uh, plugins would be much cheaper because the plugins feel like shit. They feel like shit. Pardon my friends. And I hope I hear my kid running around. I don't, I don't typically swear in front of her, but I'm passionate about that. I have half a video, video shot where I do a comparison between a plugin and an amplifier. And in the sound sample portion of it, they both sound great. But that's only half the story. When I play the plugins, I feel nothing. I have no interaction. It feels dead. It feels soulless. It feels lifeless. As tools, they're fantastic. And if you look at them as such, great. I get no inspiration from that. I get no feeling from them. They feel terrible. It doesn't matter how good they sound to me. Because half of the experience of playing guitar, and again, maybe it's just because you know, I grew up right right near an amp and, and feeling the air push and the interaction and just the touch sensitivity that comes with playing a quality tube amp. You you do not get that with any plugin. I don't care what the plugin is. I don't care what the device is. And you guys have seen it's not from a lack of effort on my end. We've had everything from uh, the neural plugins. I, I started with the AmpliTube Suite ages ago. The 11 rack, uh, the Helix. The quad cortex itself, all the newest neural stuff, it is absolutely sounding better. There is no debate. Compared to 10 years ago, it's not close. The digital stuff sounds great. It feels terrible. That's why I still play it. Two amps. That is exactly why. Because to me, music is more than just the end product. It's the experience and the feelings that you get when you play music. Sitting cramped up here in front of my freaking computer with headphones on, or even if my monitors were on, I, I don't like it. It's not the same thing. It just feels foreign. It feels off. I hate it. Sorry, I didn't mean to rant so much. The point being, as tools, I fully get it. They do sound great. Uh, the uh, tube amp is better a billion out of a billion times. I'd even take a crappy tube amp over the best plugin in the world, so long as it was functional and reliable. <laughs> Sorry. It would make my life easier, though. I see how easy these guys have it. They have the camera set up like here, so it's like this is the corner of the desk, and then it would be pointed this way, so you'd be seeing my monitor and in Pro Tools, and then it would show it tracking, and then I'm just I'm playing along, and then I'm all done in one shot. Yeah, it would make my life a lot easier. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. Hunter S. Thompson. 
hate plugins. Uh, you're a sucker for gear on sale? Well, I am too. Or I'm just a sucker at the right place at the right time. The other thing is to keep in mind, I told you guys, well, you know what? Telecaster Wells, you know, we'll, we'll solve it. So I'm going to get out of here real quick because this is actually going to, this is a good transition here. Um, it's all about being in the right place at the right time. And I told you guys when I saw the other Corey Wong guitars for $1,200, I got two of them. I got the one from Sweetwater, which is cool. We made the video, all that fun stuff, right? But then when I saw them on sale for $1,200 at Frank Guitar Works, I picked up a second one. Now, one of those Corey Wongs is no longer here because things happen. Leverage deals. Long story short, in its place is a Telecaster. And it just all kind of worked out from being savvy. And when you see something that you know is really good, you never know what deals can possibly come up from it or what you can use as a bargaining chip or what you'll be able to get X amount of money more from or what just pops up available that you weren't expecting to pop up. That's all it is, man. Somebody keeps trying to call me from... An 808 area code. I can't remember what, where that is. Sorry about that. All right, let me try and catch up real quick. Haircut time. Staley, you need a haircut? Uh, I was actually referencing the guy at the end of the video. The shop owner was basically saying, I'm not going to lose money, but it's time for you to realize that your guitars are worthless. So come and bring them to me only if you're ready to take them for nothing on consignment. <laughs> it's time for you to take a haircut. Yeah, it's time for you to take a haircut too, bud. <laughs> and I hope you are all well. But in all seriousness, I do. Look at this. I was, um, the other day I got out of the shower. And my, my wife hates me when I do this. Because she listened to a bunch of really crappy emo. Because she's younger than I am. And I, I, I'll like do this. I'll cut my hair like this. And I'll just like mock that screamo garbage. That that, that, that that generation really liked. Or I'll put like the beanie like half on my head, you know, like that, like super scene kid. <laughs> she gets really annoyed. But it came out other the other day, my point of this rambling, uh, I came out of the shower and I walked a dog. The sun hit me just right. And I looked like I was straight out of a, a J-Rock video from Japan. And I was just like, I'm like, this look I could rock. But as a whole, yeah, dude, the mullet's coming in. I need a haircut. <laughs> uh, you have one more pedal purchase to make for nostalgic purposes. A dear friend is selling some pedals he bought when we lived together in college. Won't think it does. You might be done. Maybe you're never done. Don't lie to yourself, but that's good sentiment to have. Jim X JHS pedals 2025. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. It's nothing against JHS. I just, they don't need me and they're doing just fine. And quite frankly, I'd rather work with, um, a smaller company, just in general too at this point. I'd rather be, like, that's the other thing. Like, I'd like to get in on the ground floor with any given company or, like, a company that's really coming up and see where it goes and, like, help them and see if they can help me because this is a mutual thing. You know what I mean? But they don't need me. <laughs> oh, man. A signature Tone King pedal. They don't make pedals. Um... But I love my, my I love my gremlin. Love my gremlin. I love Tonky Games. Plugins feel like shit. That's why I love your channel. <laughs> what? But what am I gonna do? Am I gonna lie? It feels like garbage. And that's how I know like I take this too seriously. And and, and I'm I'm controversial, so to speak, but I hate it. I hate them. The trick to me, and the way I've found to be able to use plugins is to have the canvas, which is the Walrus Audio, feed out from my pedal board straight into input three of the Octopri. And then that's getting just a dry sound with only my drive pedals in front of it. 
And then I can feed that right into a plugin. So I'm not actually having to do the experience of tracking through the plugin deliberately. I get to use my amp and track in a manner that I enjoy. But then afterwards, I can blend in all sorts of stuff or try stuff out. That's different. Sure, cool. But as far as the actual tracking and playing and performing, no, don't like plugins. Howdy. Saws trying to catch you on the earlier time. Don't worry about it, Steve. I know we, we, we're a little bit uh, different now. It is 5, almost 5 p.m. in the UK instead of it almost being 6 p.m. I've got my world clock turned on in my head. Uh, digital is easy, but analog all the way, 100%. I like using an AB box to play both the Vox and the Fender, blending and balancing as needed. That's definitely a good thing to do. Thanks for quoting the King of Weird. I have a Gonzo fist tattoo. When the tough gets going, the weird turn pro. I love Hunter. You look into it. Oh, a loaded Jazzmaster pickguard I'm watching is on sale. Oh! What kind of pickups? Let me know. Okay, do you have a difficult time or get less resale value if a guitar is not branded Fender or Gibson or PRS? Um, if it's not branded Fender or Gibson, I'm going to spare the, the, the PRS thing because I do not consider them easy to sell. I, I've gone over this in detail and how I, I, I can't stand the people that buy PRS guitars. No offense to them, but the ones I've dealt with have all been just it's like negotiating with my t my toddler. It just drives me freaking insane. Um, so I would not put those in the same class as the Gibson and the Fender. And I would say though, yeah, it, it's harder to sell brands that are not Fender or Gibson in general. That's why I, I stick with those for the most part. I like them both. I like them too. I like them and they're easier to sell. And from a business standpoint, like, I got the Arctic White uh, traditional 60 Telecaster that's double bound. I shot the demo for it. I shot the photography for it, for the listing. Uh, I put it on the website. And now it's in a case. It's not in a rack. It's done. When it sells, it sells. Uh, I had want a gym-inspired overdrive pedal called the Honest Truth. Uh, it would just be... Well, first of all, you'd have to be playing with no other pedals and you'd have to be using just a Telecaster. Just a regular, regular old-fashioned Telecaster and it would be just a clean boost. So you would hit it and you weren't allowed, you're not allowed to use any other dirt after it or have dirt from your amp. And all it, all it would do is basically amplify your, your playing even louder. And that would be the honest truth. So if you're playing well, it'd be like, damn, this sounds good. But if you're playing bad, it's going to be like, damn, this sounds bad and it's loud. <laughs> uh, 9020 Vintage Jazzmaster. Check out a place called Hoagland. Type in Hoagland Customs on Reverb. Let me see here. Hoagland Custom. I don't... I don't fully endorse the um, the 9020D stuff. Not that I endorse. Do I endorse anything? I'll think about that. I don't think I do. All right. This is a shop I want you to check out. Hoagland Custom. These guys genuinely make everything by hand and they have a 0% failure rate. <laughs> and it's all high quality. They're right here in Florida. And you're getting like extremely good components and it's all done right. Uh, if you are looking to upgrade your offset guitar, these are the people I would, I would talk to. Hoagland Custom, family business. They're the little guys, but sometimes little guys do better work. I would take that over a 90D every single day of the week and twice on Saturday. Not Sunday, Saturday. Oh man. I agree with the PRS resale. They'll get about 40, 50 percent because PRS buyers are way too picky, especially after their fire sale. Oh yeah, PRS. No, that no, I'm good. I'm good. And I'll tell you something funny. There's a guy near me that is selling a mint condition. He bought it and he clearly never played it. Like you could see. 
an SE McCarty 594. And he wants 400 bucks for it. And me knowing that all I would have to do is drive 10 minutes, give him $400 cash, and then be able to sell it for $600 without any effort online. Factor 60 or $70 for shipping. Reverb takes 40 bucks or so. Uh, I would make $100 and get a free video out of it. I still don't have the motivation to do it. I just can't be asked. I have no interest in the guitar. <laughs> Bad business. Anyone install a solderless pre-wired guard on a Strat? I've done solderless many years ago. They've probably gotten a lot better, but if if soldering was genuinely difficult, I could see the appeal to it more, but it's not difficult. And it's a it's a more reliable connection. So for me, like I said, I haven't tried any of the newer stuff, but I, I, I don't really, I don't know. It's not my thing. I'd rather just do it the old school way. Well, I mean, if, if it worked out for you, that's good. I just know that, um, I just know that there's, their, 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 their quality control rate is, is not as high as it used to be. And I guess that happens when you ramp up production of things, you get bigger. It is what it is. It's just like anything else in life, right? You looked out, you got a made a extra ultraviolet Hendrix strat through Amazon. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I knew it's purple. That's really cool. Through Amazon? Really? That had to have been an ages ago. But congratulations. Love to hear that. You've been jonesing for a McCarty. Uh, that's my favorite PRS model. I'll say that. I'm not all negative PRS. I'm, I'm, I'm negative selling PRS and I'm negative a lot of the BS that Paul says. Um, it's just a lot of snake oil. It's great marketing though. But the McCarty is like, it's like his design. That's like the PRS sound to me is a McCarty. It's simple. It's, they could still be had for an affordable price. That and the Custom 24, like those are the PRS models to me. Everything else is just so insanely derivative or so insanely over the top that they just don't, they don't really appeal to me all that much. No worries. Paul, I don't think he's out there. I just think he's really good at marketing. And, and, and the people that love PRS guitars, they eat everything he says up. That man said with a straight face in an interview on film that vintage Stratocasters had worthless bridge pickups. He said that with a straight face on film. The hubris of that man to say that is just like, damn. You really do think you are God's gift to the earth. I don't know, man. I appreciate his passion. I appreciate that he is genuinely the face of his own company. And I think that some of the stuff he says is true. I believe that a better the better your guitar uh sounds, like if you're if you're if you're running the racks for a guitar in a store, a good way to tell if you have like well put together instrument in your hands, regardless of the brand, is how does it ring out acoustically? Because if it sounds dead as a doornail, you're not starting from a very good spot. Now, there is no time limit that it needs to ring out for. And dude, re reading that thread was driving me nuts. I saw videos from... Dude, the things people will do to get views on this platform is just... I don't think I'm cut out for this. I really don't think I'm cut out for this. Um, it's just like... It, it, the guy tested every guitar he had for 45 seconds was Paul right or was Paul lying or was Paul telling the truth or it was just some it was just so just weird to me but people like it and it's soul crushing <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been getting enough sleep lately but I don't know I'm gonna wrap up in a second I'll answer a few more questions uh, have you ever tried a Nash guitar? I like some of the boutique brands, but I'm concerned I wouldn't get 50% of the value on the resale market when you buy them. I, when Nash guitars were affordable, I thought I think that if you like relic guitars, they were very difficult to beat. Nash guitars are no longer 
in that like budget tier of like, oh, this is this is really good value to me. You use Fender Custom Shop for what a Nash costs now. And Nash's newer is still around two grand. Or used used rather are still around two grand for most models. Some models are more than that. No. For that money, I'd, 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 I'd buy another Momose from Japan with no wear on it. If I'm going to take a bath on the guitar, I'd rather have a guitar that was actually made by the people too. Like those are the, the Nash guitars are parts casters that are aged and then set up by him. It is what it is. I always picked out my guitars that way. I don't think I've ever plugged a guitar into an amp to test this pickups. They could be changed. Well, I want to make sure it functions and not the three-way selector switch functions. But outside of that, like, yeah, I, I'm with you, Greg, 100%. Okay, guys. Just a reminder, tomorrow's video is round two. We're not going to check on a leaderboard just yet because we only have the first round done. Next week, we'll do a check and we'll see who's doing well. And we'll go over the actual prizes for each one. We already talked about what the prizes were going to be, but we didn't designate who was going to win which prize of the first, of the, the top three people who filled out a bracket. And we'll have a much better idea who has a chance of winning and who does not. Because there's a major surprise tomorrow. There's a major surprise. Say lobby. Thank you all for checking this out. I'm going to get going. I'm going to go play with my kid. Uh, and we're going to... I believe today... I told her that before it rained, we go catch some Pokemon. She still likes that sometimes. Gets her out of the house. I'll take it. And then we'll go out in the garage or uh, into the backyard and play. I'm done rambling. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you over the weekend. Hopefully we have more than the one video. But again, this is, I just don't have the time lately. So I appreciate, seriously, all you guys for all the support. And I'll see you when I see you. Take it easy.